Hi, I'm, I'm Brooklyn Borough President uh, Eric Adams, and I'm joined by my colleagues in the Senate and the Assembly and uh, a representative from New Yorkers Against Gun Violence. I'm here with uh, Senator Roxanne Prasad and Assembly mem Member Joanne uh, Simons. Um, Council Member uh, Jamani Williams' office is all also part of this initiative, as well as our good friends and partners on this gun issue on a national level, New Yorkers Against Gun Violence, Kim Mascaritola. Uh, I want to thank all of our partners for this important initiative. We keep focusing on uh, firearm arms and guns and not look at uh, what is the supplier of the violence and uh, that is a focus on the bullets and the legislation that we are uh, introducing today or announcing today is really looking at bullets and have how bullets have been ignored as part of the problem. It is the other aspect of the equation. You cannot have a death without the bullet uh, and a gun and bullet together is part of the problem. So today we're announcing a, a legislation that will one increase penalties on gun dealers who sell ammunition that does not uh, corresp correspond to the gun uh, permit the individuals have. So we're saying in essence, if you do not have a permit for a high speed ammunition or for a long gun or rifle, you should not be purchasing ammunition or allowed to purchase ammunition uh, that is being sold for that type of gun. Two, we want to expand the prohibition of selling ammunition to individuals without the proper permit beyond pistols and revolvers. As it stands now, you cannot buy the ammunition if it does not fit the pistol or revive revolver. We want to expand that to all guns. Uh, three, we want to prohibit the amount of the ammunition that can be purchased over a period of 90 days. Th this is to prevent people from stockpiling large amounts of ammunition. So this is important um, legislation that we are introducing, uh, particularly when you think about uh, the number of mass shootings that have taken place in America. And if the New York Times is right with their analysis, one may have happened yesterday. Almost one mass shooting a day, an average of one mass shooting a day, that's an astonishing number to think about. Um, San Bernardino is uh, heavily on our mind, is on our forefront when we think about the 14 people who were killed and injured and nearly two dozen more were injured. Um, it is something that we want to focus on. Amassing large amounts of ammunition serves no purpose. In the San Bernardino, California shooting, uh, police believe that the two individuals involved amassed over 6,000 rounds of ammunition they were stockpiling. This makes no sense. Although the guns were purchased by a third party, it is believed that the two shooters purchased the ammunition. And this is the loophole we, we are attempting to close. Our legislation will curtail the opportunity for someone to stockpile large amounts of ammunition and curtail the opportunity for someone to purchase ammunition that does not correspond with the gun. Simply put, if you're not permitted to have an assault rifle or weapon, you should not be allowed to have the ammunition for one. Uh, this is no legal purpose to have ammunition for AK-47 if the permit you have is for a 38 revolver. And that's what we want to close this loophole. We're going to raise the fines and penalties uh, the second violation of this law will increase the fine and penalties to a Class B misdemeanor or not more than three months in jail and not more than $500 uh, in fine. And we're moving it to a Class E felony or up to four years in prison with a minimum of one year. And so it is our opportunity to really shed light on the use of uh, bullets and how bullets impact the death that takes place around the possession of those who are participating in mass shootings. We want to stop the bullets. If the mass shooters can't get access to bullets, they can't cause mass tragedies. A simple tweak of our gun laws will answer a very serious question, 
how do we stop the stop the stockpiling of large quantities of ammunition? Uh, San Bernardino should be should be a wake up call for all New Yorkers and for all Americans. Six thousand bullets stockpiles in anyone's home is the wrong message to send that we have an open season on stockpiling large amounts of ammunition and we want to put a stop to that. I want to bring on Senator Prasad and then Assemblywoman uh, Joanne Simon. Thank you. Good morning. I want to thank Borough President Adams and my colleague Joanne Simon for coming together on this very important issue. When we think of San Bernardino, when we think of someone having 6,000 bullets, it's a travesty. No one should ever be do, have, stockpiling that amount of bullets. We are not trying to prevent the law-abiding citizen from purchasing his or her ammunition. The, the average hunter does not need to stack, stockpile 6,000 bullets. There was a study that was done by the FBI and I think the University of Texas that covered the years 2000 to 2013. And they covered active shooters. In that span of time, there were over 162 active shooter incidents. In 2015, in the United States of America, as of today, we have 353. Mm. There is something incredibly wrong with that number. We should not be having 353 mass shootings in this country. Again, we are not trying to prevent the law-abiding citizen from having ammunition. We are saying, if you have a gun, you have a pistol, you're, or you're a hunter, you should be able to buy the reasonable amount of bullets for your hunting season within a 90-day period. You should not be allowed to go to the dealer and purchase an extraordinary amount of ammunition every month. We're saying within a 90-day period, you should be allowed to purchase at least the amount for two sessions of your hunting season, your hunting season but not stockpiling 6,000 bullets. When we think of that number, everyone hearing that number should say, there is something incredibly wrong there is no one, there is no one, and there is no need for you to have 6,000 bullets stockpiled in your home. You're not arming a small militia, so you, there is no need for that. We are saying, in New York State, we have to take action. If we don't take action and let the rest of the country see what we're doing, we will continue to be talking about mass shootings this time next year. If we this, this, this that we are trying to do will curtail the amount of killings that we're having based on mass shooters. Every bullet that's used has a name. Just think of the people who were shot in San Bernardino. San Bernardino. Every bullet that was used has the name of that person on it. Every bullet that was used in every mass shooting has someone's name on it. So when someone says a bullet does not have a name, it does. Think of the people who were killed, and think of the people who were injured in these mass shootings. And then we'll think, we'll say, it does have a name. There is no need for us to stockpile with ammunition. Absolutely no need. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bor Borough President Adams, for your leadership on this issue. This is, as my colleagues have said is extremely important. Thank you, Senator Prasad, for that information with regard to the number of mass shootings. I think she's absolutely correct. That number of mass shootings and that, no that increase in two years alone tells us that there's something fundamentally flawed with our system. You know, if I have a cold, I can, can't buy Sudafed unless I show an ID. Mm. But I can walk into a gun store and walk out with enough bullets to arm a small army without showing any kind of ID mm -hmm. and without showing that I actually own that type of gun. So I can buy any kind of bullets regardless of what kind of gun I own. I don't even have to own a gun to stockpile bullets. Nothing stops me and my friends from buying more and more bullets. The sky is the limit. 
The San Bernardino shooters, as you've heard, had 6,000 rounds of ammunition with them. We need this legislation here in New York. New York needs to be a leader. New York needs to say, quite unequivocally, that will never happen here. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you. much. We want to now call up our partner from New York, New York is Against Gun Violence, Kim Masker, Masker Etola. <laughs> Did I respond? Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you all so much. Uh, here on behalf of New Yorkers Against Gun Violence, we uh, want to thank um, all of the great people here, uh, Borough President Adams, uh, Senator Purcell, and Assemblymember Simon for their commitment to uh, ending the scourge of gun violence. Um, regulating ammunition is often a, an overlooked part of the gun safety legislation, um, but dealers should not only be selling guns to uh, people who have gun licenses, they should also be making sure that when they sell the ammunition um, that it is uh, specific to that licensee's weapon. Uh, this bill is designed to keep ammunition out of the hands of unlicensed users and it's also meant to crack down on illegal trafficking of ammunition. So we are uh, proud to support this legislation. Um, we're very uh, proud to be here with such strong gun safety advocates um, and I know that w working with all these people um, that we will uh, definitely um, you know, do, do our very best to make sure that we work with everyone to get this legislation passed so that we can cut down on the scourge of gun violence against New Yorkers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Kim. Uh, and, and I think that my colleagues uh, clearly uh, outlined the importance of this legislation. Uh, when you look at the fact that in San Bernardino we had 6,000 around stockpile, but there was nothing to stop them from going to 60,000 rounds. Mm -hmm. um, we do not have common sense gun laws when an individual can purchase an unlimited amount of ammunition that can actually outnumber the amount of ammunition of responding officers who respond to the call of emergencies. Uh, when the San Bernardino shooters were stopped, uh, the, their vehicle was equipped with all sorts of ammunition um, that we could do a better job in and that's why this common sense tweak to gun laws would send a strong message that you can't stockpile large quantities of ammunition and you cannot purchase ammunition that is not associated with the gun that you own on your permit. In San Bernardino, one individual may have purchased the gun, another individual um, appeared to have purchased the ammunition. That's a terrible max match. When you walk in the store and purchase uh, a, a bullet, the gun dealer should look at the permit and should be the first checkpoint to say, you don't own an AK-47, there's no reason you're buying bullets for an AK-47, and that should be a signal to law enforcement that there is an illegal gun or a bad match with the person who's permitted to carry the gun and the type of ammunition that they're purchasing. Uh, we'll open the floor to any questions at this time. Great, you did a good job. Yes. The, the gun um, seller, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the, the gun dealer or whoever's selling the bullets, bullets would be penalized for selling those bullets to someone that is not licensed to carry the proper, the proper uh, ammunition. Okay. Selling too much. Oh, it's for selling too much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Oh, thank you. Brave in the cold. Brave in the cold. Awesome. See my attitude. Oh, my God.